You are listening to Off the Cuff. Now, here's your host, Adam Banks. Welcome, everybody, to Off the Cuff. I am Adam Banks coming at you live from Lexington, Kentucky, here in the Waterstone studio. Thank you for listening to the show. What you are hearing is the new intro slash theme music to Off the Cuff. It's been a while. It's been a long time coming. I have been using different songs periodically throughout the years to introduce the show. And one day, I was sitting around thinking, what would happen if somebody just called me up one day and said, we're going to have to take your podcast down because of copyright infringement? And I started thinking, what if that actually happened? Because every episode that I have starts out with another person's song that I don't obviously own. It could be the Beatles, it could be Drake, it could be Kanye. And a couple of times, I've had a few episodes that I've had to go back and redo because I've played the music too long. So I started researching, and I found out that you are allowed to play other people's music, but it cannot exceed 30 seconds. So anytime you go over 30 seconds, they could potentially make you take it down because you are using their music without their permission. A couple artists who have made me take their music down has been Drake, Kanye West, and Eminem. Those three people do not like their music used. So now it feels good to actually have music that I own. And I started to think about that. I own this music. The beat that you heard in the background, that is the music that I own. It was awesome being a part of the creative process. I found a guy from uh, Texas And he does a lot of work with radio shows and a lot of podcasts. And he said that what was awesome about his business was he lets people involved in the creative process. So I got to actually pick the instruments and the music and the beat that I wanted the show to be. So I told him that the the vibe that I was going for was a very fun, upbeat rock meets hip-hop. And we sat down together and we found out the exact beats that I wanted. And it's really hard to do that, to actually sit down and pick beat per beat. I've never done that before. I'm not a musical artist. I don't sing, at least in public, and I don't go to a studio and mix different sounds. So this was my first time actually getting to put together a beat, getting to put together music. And it was a lot of fun. It was pretty thrilling. I can see where people get off on that kind of stuff. I can see where artists love to sit down and make their own music. It's fun. It's exhilarating. It's creative. And it was fun to be a part of the creative process. I love creativity. And the guy who did it, I want to give a shout out to him. He was awesome. This is going to take a little bit to get used to. Usually, I love coming in to different songs and it just it gives the podcast less monotony and it gives it something new and fresh every single week. So I don't know how I feel about coming into the same beat every single week. So what's good about that is I do have this guy's voice to do my voiceovers, and I can include another beat with it as long as it don't exceed 30 seconds. But what's cool about this intro, that's the official intro, I do own the music, and I can play that music in the background of the entire podcast, and it would be fine. Adam Banks owns that music. And it's pretty cool. I've never owned a piece of music before, and that's what's cool about it. Now, it did take some time to find the exact perfect beat that I wanted. That is not the original beat. That's not the original theme song that was first sent to me. I didn't go through this company that I went through before. I started out researching, looking for different companies that did this kind of stuff, and I found a company. I'm not going to say who it is, but he sent me something that I was so devastated over. I mean, I was disgusted with the beat that he sent me because it was totally not Off the Cuff's vibe. It was not the personality of Off the Cuff. It sounded like a coffee shop podcast. And my friend Chad, who's been on the show, he heard the uh, the, the theme song and he sounded sounded like he said it sounded like a kids podcast. He said it sounded like something that belonged on Blues Clues, and I was like, yeah, that's got to go, and it did. And I'm going to play you what this company originally sent me for the intro for the official theme music of Off the Cuff. Now, I want you to imagine this being the actual theme song of Off the Cuff. You tell me if you would get excited to hear the rest of the show if I came into this 
every single time that I recorded an episode. What's going on? The conversation never ends. Going off on random tangents. Calling right back around again. Oh, it's off the cuff with Adam Banks. <laughs> so it's very catchy, and I do like it, but it sounds like... Like what Chad said, it sounds like a kid's podcast. Or it sounds like a show that would be talking about books in a coffee shop. It does not fit the personality of Off the Cuff. So I'm going to keep that. I am going to keep it, and I might play it just to pretty much make fun of it. But thank God I officially got a podcast intro that came through that fit the personality. All right, well, a lot has been going on, ladies and gentlemen, since we have last done a podcast. Election Day is approaching here in the United States, and this is the national election. Everyone across the entire country votes on Tuesday. That's the official election day for everybody. Now, everybody's primary is different. Here in Kentucky, we do our primary elections in May, and then some other state might do their primaries in March or February. But in November... The whole entire country votes on that one day, election day. And here in Kentucky, the race that everybody is talking about is the Congress race, Amy McGrath versus Andy Barr. I'll tell you one thing. That is going to be the first time that I do a throwaway vote in my life. And as a citizen, I have the right to do whatever I want to do with my vote as long as I exercise it some way. And I am not going to go for Amy McGrath or Andy Barr. They're both crooked politicians that have no idea what they're doing. And they're not in it for the best interest of the people. And I will ride in myself before I vote for one of them. So save your mail. Quit mailing me 50 cards a day. I'm serious. I open my mail. I can go a day without checking my mail and open it the next day. And it's full of Andy Barr and Amy McGrath newsletters and postcards and envelopes with it's aggravating so i cannot wait for this election to be over just simply to be done with getting the mail also today is daylight savings time and daylight saving time is when you either set your clock up or you set your clock back exactly one hour and this time we set our clocks back so Right now, the time is 3.55 p.m. Yesterday, the time would have been 4.55 p.m., so we have fallen back. In the fall, we fall back, and in the spring, we spring forward. So why do we even have daylight savings time? A lot of people ask that. A lot of people are always wondering, why do we even have a daylight savings time? It's a long history that we've been doing this. So if you do some research, like I did, because I wanted to find out, why do we still do daylight savings time? I like the old time. I like it getting darker later than darker earlier. The day's better. You get more sunshine. The days are longer. And we need more sunshine. Obviously, with more sunshine, people are happier. It gives us the happy chemicals that our brain needs to be happy. More sunshine does that. It's not a coincidence that they say people in California are always smiling and everyone in California is happy. Well, there's something to that. California has a lot of sunshine. Sunshine makes a lot of people happy. It gives a lot of people the dopamine that they need to be happy. And a lot of uh, sunshine will do that. And it's scary because with this time, we could look outside our window at 530 and see pitch black. We could see total darkness. Every single day with this time, the time... It gets darker earlier and earlier, all the way up to December 21st. That is the shortest day of the year, and I think it's pitch black by like 5.15. And then it starts to, every day after that, get darker a little bit later, minute by minute, until the time goes back up. So why don't they leave the time alone? Why do we still have daylight savings time? Well, I I did dig into some research, and I found out why we basically have daylight savings time, where it come from, and why we still do it. In 1895, George Hudson is an entomologist from New Zealand. He came up with the modern concept of daylight savings time. He proposed a two-hour time shift so he'd have more after-hour work hours of sunshine to go bug hunting in the summer. So 
centuries ago, 1800s. And now here it is, 2018, 100 years later, and we're still doing it. And daylight savings time can have a deadly consequence on a lot of people. There have been studies released that because of daylight savings time, people are at higher risk of heart attacks, more car accident fatalities, and other bad outcomes. So let's take this daylight savings time where we fall back. We have an extra hour. You can use that extra hour to get sleep. But a lot of people don't spend that extra hour getting sleep. They use that extra hour to maybe drink more at the bar. You know, for like last night, for instance, uh, the bar typically closes at 2.30. But as but yesterday, because of daylight savings time, everybody at the bar got an extra hour. So everybody stayed out an extra hour. So instead of taking advantage of the extra hour of sleep, they take advantage of that extra hour to drink. So what's the problem of drinking too much too late? Well, it leads to poor sleep. Even if people get that extra hour, they're still running at a sleep deficient. Alcohol helps people initially fall asleep and sleep more deeply, but booze disrupts the sleep architecture. Later in the sleep cycle, people experience restless sleep. So you got to get that extra sleep in. Don't spend that extra hour using it to do other things in the day. Use that extra hour to sleep. A lot of people have a hard time transitioning to this time because they don't stay on their sleep pattern. So if you normally go to bed at 10 o'clock, go to bed at 9 o'clock on daylight savings time because when you wake up, you're going to be right back on your same schedule. Use that extra hour to sleep. Don't stay up. Don't be drinking. Don't be partying. And you'll be glad you did it. All right, to switch gears here to Kentucky football, what a season that Kentucky football has been having. The Wildcats had an opportunity to go to the SEC championship, and even saying that doesn't seem real, but we did. Kentucky faced Georgia last night to have the opportunity to go play against Alabama for the SEC championship. Kentucky didn't play their best game. Actually, it was the first time that the defense didn't show up to play. We usually are relying on our defense, and this time they didn't show out. And because our offense is so weak, minus Benny Snell and occasionally Terry Wilson, we rely a lot on our defense, but our defense didn't do anything. And that's why you have the game turn out the way it did. 34-17 to 17 was the final score, and Georgia goes on to face Alabama in the SEC championship. And it could have been Kentucky. Guys, I have said a lot about Mark Stoops. I have been pretty colorful about Mark Stoops, how he's been as a football coach for a long time. And I have to give credit where credit is due. This year, he did an outstanding job. And as a Kentucky fan, I could have not have asked for a better season. And I want to thank Mark Stoops for this wonderful season. And I don't want to apologize to Mark Stoops because someone who makes $3 million a year can get criticized. He can get criticized. He deserves to get criticized. I don't feel sorry for him. When you pay a man $3 million a year to lose and only win five games a year usually, you can get criticized. But what Mark Stoops did, I want to thank him and say good job. Now, I'm not on the Mark Stoops train just yet. In order for me to get on the Mark Stoops train, Stoops is going to have to show me what he can do next year without Benny Snell because I've seen a lot of things that Mark Stoops, he, I mean, Benny Snell pulled us out of a lot of losses. If it wasn't for Benny Snell, I don't think we could have scored near as what we could have scored. Our offense relies on him so much with his running. And we're going to get Benny Snell hurt if we're not careful because we run him so much. Terry Wilson, he's not convinced me that he is a great quarterback. But the story is still being written with him as well. We're going to have to see how the offense improves him and, and develops him throughout the rest of his college career. But Stoops, good job, man. You have potentially a 10-2 and two team at the end of the season. And as a Kentucky football fan, we cannot ask for better than that because we are used to two, three, four win seasons. We got 10 wins. Stoops, thank you. And I'm not going to talk crap about you if even if you lose the rest 
of the year. You still gave us seven wins, and you gave us a really exciting time to be a football fan. We actually had that hope for just a week that we could be in the SEC championship game. We wasn't there. We didn't make it, but you gave us hope. And as a Kentucky fan, as a Kentucky football fan, you can't ask for much more than that. The Cats play Tennessee next week. Then they play Middle Tennessee. Then they play Louisville. That's three winnable games. I don't see us losing those three games. Kentucky has proven that they are a good team. Before Mark Stoops' teams in the past, I would say, well, you know, it's still up in the air. We could get beat by Middle Tennessee. I mean, because we have been beat by teams like that. Central Michigan, for instance. Or Southern Mississippi. Not Central Michigan, Southern Mississippi. So we have been beaten by pretty bad teams before. So it wouldn't be a shock if Middle Tennessee beat us last year or the year before. But this year, that would be a shock. But it's not going to happen. Kentucky's going to win out. They're going to win out against Tennessee, Middle Tennessee, and Louisville. At least I hope. But even if they don't, I'm not going to say anything about Stoops. Because he gave us one of the most exciting years as a Kentucky football fan that we have ever had. It's definitely been the most excited I've been. And I've been a Kentucky football fan for 11 years. And these football fans of 30, 40 years, they probably would say this year was the most exciting team that they've watched since their time as a fan. And you can't ask for much more than that. But again, I'm not on the Stoops train yet. He's going to have to stay consistent. He's going to have to get us to a bowl every single year. He's now set that he has set that bar to where we need to be at a bowl. And listen, when you're getting paid millions of dollars, I can say that. When you're getting paid millions of dollars, you can have me get on my podcast and talk crap about you if you're not doing that. Now, if you were making forty, fifty thousand $50,000 a year, I can see you commenting back to my podcast and saying, Adam, shut up. Leave him alone. But we're paying the man millions of dollars to win. And if we're paying him millions of dollars and he's not giving us at least a bowl appearance, then I have the right to complain. But football season, it's almost over. And I'm sure we'll talk about it as it continues because we're going to be in a good bowl. Regardless, Kentucky's going to be on a good bowl. And I plan on doing a football podcast with the football crew very soon here on the podcast to talk about the bow, to preview the bow. Some potential bows that I've seen us in is uh, the in a bow against Ohio State. I'm not sure what bowl it is. They have so many different bowls. But we're not going to be in a toilet bowl this year. We're going to be in an actual legitimate bowl playing a team like Ohio State. And that's exciting. That's fun. But Kentucky basketball is right around the corner. As a matter of fact, this Tuesday, the Cats have their first game against the the Duke Blue Devils. The number one team in the country versus the number two team of the country. Duke being number one. And I tell you, Duke looks good. Duke looks really good. They beat a team by damn near 100 points the other night. Granted, it was an exhibition game, but Duke is good, and what a recruiting class they have. I've been pretty bold by saying that Kentucky's going to go 40-0 this year in basketball. Uh, After seeing their exhibition games, that makes me want to withdraw that comment, but I'm not going to. I'll stand by it, but I'm not as confident watching Kentucky in these exhibition games as I was in the preseason before these exhibition games. It scares me a little bit. But it is exhibition games. It's still early. It's still just early November. You really can't see how your team's going to be in March until you get to around January, February. And I think this team is going to be able to do some great things and potentially, potentially win the championship. Now, I got an opportunity to go onto another podcast and preview the Kentucky basketball season for this year. I went on Friends in the Corner podcast hosted by Dan Polly. You can check out his podcast on iTunes. But he had me on his podcast to preview the Kentucky basketball season. And what I would like to do is let you hear some clips of that interview that he did with me. And the reason I want to play you these clips is because Dan asked me some very interesting questions. And I think he asked me some very important questions that needed to be answered. 
And one of the questions that he asked me was, is there any pressure on Cal to win another championship at Kentucky? So take a listen at some clips of the interview. And here is a clip of Friends in the Corner podcast of Dan Polly asking me that exact question. Take a listen. And we finally get into uh, March Madness. And the last couple of years, we've had some early exits out of March Madness here. So I want to ask you, do you think that there is more pressure on Cal this year to um, go further in the tournament um, than there has been maybe in previous seasons? Yes. Uh, the book is still being written for John Calipari. His legacy at Kentucky is without a doubt going to go down in history as one of the best eras of Kentucky basketball. I mean, what's not to love about Calipari and his era? He has won 81% of his games. Um, he's taken us to what, four or five Final Fours. Final Fours have been the two championships and won one. Yeah, he's, so. won, he's won one. But this is why Calipari needs one more. He needs one more, Dan, before people leave him alone and people shut up. Because if he wins one more... It's going to silence the national media. They're going to quit talking about, oh, can Cal coach? That's going to shut them up. If you win two, which it's hard to do, it's hard to do. There's a lot of legends out there that haven't won two. I mean, you got Roy Williams, you got Rick Patino, you got Coach K, who have gotten there. Um, Bill Nova's coach, I can't remember his name off the top uh, of my head. Jay Wright. Jay Wright, he's one yeah. too. Yeah, yeah, there have been a few coaches to get there, but it's hard. There's a lot of great coaches that haven't. And uh, Calipari is one of them. But he needs another one to silence the Big Blue Nation. And I say this because even though that we've had all these great things happen under the Calipari umbrella, this era of Calipari, um, there have been some disappointing losses in the tournament that can get fans frustrated. I mean, we went 39-1. Uh, and one. That frustrated the heck out of – it still frustrates me. <laughs> uh, we took a – um, an exit from the game we went to the championship game in back in 2014. Now, even though that was special, it still was so close, enough to make it frustrating. So we've had the number one recruiting class every year. I mean, we're we're outstanding. We have all this talent and only one title. Right. So Cal, in order him to convince that his method is working, he needs two. I think two is the magic number. And also – Cal needs to to solidify his legend at Kentucky. Now, yeah, you got you got Patino won one at Kentucky, Smith won one at Kentucky, um, and Joby Hall has won one at Kentucky, and Cal has won one at Kentucky. So he's on the same level as them. But and if you want to start getting buildings named after you and courts named after if you, you want Cal Cal Court and you want Cal Arena, you have to have at least two. Right. You can't do it with one. So, yes, I think it is important. And fans are going to start growing more and more frustrated if he does. Yes, he wins. And any, I think it's stupid that anyone says they should fire Cal. Yeah. You go. Who, who are you going to get better than him? You're not. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so that's one question that Dan Polly asked me. And another question that he asked was about this new G League contract where the G League is going to be giving select $125,000 contracts to seniors in high school to skip college and go directly to the G League. So they forfeit their college eligibility. And I like this question because, and you'll hear in my answer, that it puts to rest the debate of is or should college athletes be paid. So take a listen at the question and the answer that I give on this segment of Friends in the Corner podcast. More than one. And... When- you know, this might all change next year yeah. with the uh, stuff here. I, you've heard all about the G League stuff going on here. Yes. And so just to fill people in here, um, it's been announced, I think, within the last couple of weeks or days here, that the NBA G League is going to begin offering contracts to, uh, quote-unquote, elite players um, to start in the G League instead of going to college. So they'll be able to go straight into the G League, play there, and then they'll be able to be drafted, I'm assuming, in the NBA. Now, they, didn't, they don't say how many contracts are given out or how they're going to be distributed or what it – but, I mean, this does have an impact on Cal's recruiting. And this has an impact on Duke's recruiting too, but Cal, who has been the face of the one-and-done program um, or the one-and-done process, um, 
it really kind of will be interesting to see how that will work out for him because he'll, he'll still get big recruits, I'm sure. But will those players stay longer? Will they, you know, will they, you know, still be kind of a one and done process with that kind of trinkle out? But it's kind of going to be interesting to see. It will. Not only is this big and a game changer for John Calipari, this is a game changer for the sport of college basketball. So the D League, or the I'm sorry, the G League, G League, G League they're, they're putting money into call it the G League, the G League, the Gatorade League, formerly the D League. Um, right now, uh, has uh, they have come up with a figure of one hundred and twenty five thousand dollars, and they're calling these select contracts for freshmen that they feel like are good enough to not have to go to college, come to the G League, develop, and then hopes of going uh, to the next level. So, so that they can be freshmen in college is. They're not going to recruit them right out of high school. Uh, uh, did I say freshmen in college? Yeah. Okay. So seniors. I'm sorry. Seniors right out of uh, high school. Okay. Yeah. So it's not freshmen in college. Just it's, wanted to make sure because I was like, then Cal, then Cal's doing okay. You yes. Yes. It's it's seniors uh, right out of high school. So this is huge for the sport because I like that they're doing this, mm-hmm. and I'll tell you why. One, it's going to put to rest the conversation of should college athletes be paid. Because listen to this. This is interesting. As it currently stands, college athletes get a free college education plus access to top quality coaching, medical care, strength and conditioning training, and valuable media exposure. That's how they – that's in the NCAA is kind of – So they, they, the NCAA is saying that is equivalent to the figure of $125,000 because of everything that they're getting while coming to play for – their team that that free education that media exposure that medical care right. you know what else is the equivalent to one hundred twenty five thousand dollars what one hundred twenty five thousand dollars exactly <laughs> so that's why the g league i feel like didn't just throw out this random number i think they went to colleges or to someone over this who's in college athletics and they said what do you think put a value a number on what you think uh students are getting in return from going to play for your school and they probably put a $125,000 value on there. So if you still have students that are seniors in high school that still choose to go to college over taking $125,000 cash in the in the G League, that right there answers the question that college basketball is more valuable than going to the G League. And college basketball is – you don't have to pay the players because they're still choosing that exposure. They're choosing that medical care. They're choosing that um, education mm-hmm. in return for um, instead of the money. So right. that just kind of puts to silence that whole, oh, should college athletes be paid? Well, right now, if, if they're choosing to go to college over joining the G League. Well, and, you know, I've always thought about this, too, when it comes to college, college athletics and stuff like that. So we'll stop it there. But that's true. I thought that was pretty interesting questions, and I thought that was something that I wanted my audience to hear as well. So, like I said, if you want to hear the rest of the interview, go to YouTube, go to iTunes, or SoundCloud, Stitcher. He's on a bunch of places. And uh, check out Dan Polly's podcast, Friends in the Corner, and check out his episode featuring me talking about the Kentucky basketball team. It's episode 12. So check that out. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you for listening to another episode of Off the Cuff. It has been great to have you listening, and I hope you enjoyed the theme song, as you can hear playing in the background. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Adam Banks. To keep up with Off the Cuff, follow me on Twitter, AdamBanks88. Find us on iTunes. Find us on YouTube and subscribe. Or you could also check out the Facebook page, facebook.com slash Off the Cuff with Adam Banks to keep up with every episode that we have done here on Off the Cuff. Thank you for listening, and I'll see you in the next episode.